If you don't know about 3D printing, listen up because 3D printing can change the way we look at analog film photography and it's getting wild what it can do for the field. Hey team, Will Cobb here and welcome to another film photography video. If you love film, you love all things developing and scanning and every little detail, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and hang around because there are some amazing tips on my channel and only more coming. If you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'll tell you about how five of you guys can win one of these film carriers. I'm gonna give five of these away at the very end of the video. Stay tuned for that. Also, before I get going, I do wanna make sure I give credit to these designers. Links are below if you have your own 3D printer and wanna try these out. I'll also be taking requests for printing some of these on my Instagram. You can follow me there, at one Cobb and I'll be designing my own in the future, so stay tuned for that. I won't be going into the full gambit of 3D printing in this video. I'm gonna save that for another video. I'm just gonna be talking about the film carriers in this video. Okay, so in this video, we are talking about 3D printed film carriers. They come in all varieties and sizes, lots of designs out there, and they're really cool. I don't like to bring any negativity to anything I talk about in my videos or on Instagram, but there are times when, you know, we're trying to keep costs down and the company Negative Supply is a very amazing company. They make film carriers. They're out of like aluminum blocks. They are high quality pieces of machines. For what they are, they're worth the money. And if you are a professional photographer, definitely check those out. They are worth their money, but they are really expensive. And uh, there's other budget options like the Pixelator where I talked about in a video really recently. That's a great option. It's only 50 US dollars. There are also cheaper budget options. Negative Supply just came out with a 35 millimeter $100 carrier and it's nice and simple and you pull the film through, similar to some of the carriers I'm about to show you. I also discussed in a few videos back, one of the cheapest film carriers you can buy is the Pixelator. It's only 50 US dollars. But all that being said, what if you could just make your own? I've always been fascinated with 3D printers and I told myself I wanted to get one when I lived in a bigger place. Since college, I've been living in tiny places for the past five to 10 years and I've never felt like I had a place to put one. So I said when I get a garage, which I'm in right now, I would finally get one. And I, that dream finally became a reality and I'm cruising with a 3D printer now. I just love that you can dream up anything, you can design anything and just print it. It's just absolutely amazing. When I saw the negative supply stuff, I thought it was so simple, but so elegant, and I just wanted to make my own. So I was like, there's gotta be guys out there making their own. So I researched tons of carriers, and I was able to finally buy a 3D printer and get to trying out some of the ones I researched. Let's dive into what we've got going on on this table. So I'm also saving a little money and I've got this Relino LED light panel. That I've got a link down below. Uh, it's got knobs, the CRI is 95, which means it has really good light quality and it's only 45 US dollars, which is a lot cheaper than some of the expensive light tables that are about 100 or more. And, but it still has 95 CRI, which is really good. And what a lot of those have, it has good diffusion and you can see it's really nice. It's also by color. You can change it from a warm to a light, which that's really good. If you needed to dial in, I can kind of keep it cool. Another benefit of this light panel is that it is very bright. It's a lot brighter than some of the light tables that you'll see out there that just don't put out enough light, don't have that CRI. So that's another big benefit of this guy. And I've also got a 3D printed base. So if you're gonna buy this light, you will need a base because it's got little knobs on the back and that base holds it up. You can make this base out of anything. I have a 3D printer now, so I can make it myself. If you want this base, hit me up. Maybe you can get a carrier in, the, in this with it. Just hit me up on Instagram and we can talk about it. That's the light I'm using. Now let's talk about the carriers. The first one that I found and got me really interested in this topic is by Brad Brock on Thingiverse. And this one is pretty big and very simple. There's no moving parts. So what I like about this one is it has this raised center section that specifically doesn't touch the film. It grabs the edges of the film. It only grabs the edge of the film, which holds it flat. And you'll see that similar in all of the designs today. You just pull it through manually 
and it stays flat. I'm really impressed by this one. This one has the sprocket showing, which is both good and bad. For some of you guys, you'd like to see those sprockets and that's awesome, but I do occasionally get uh, scans that have like a light cast or a color cast from the sprockets and the light shining up. Again, all links will be down below and hit me up if you want me to print one of these for you. So next up, we have Brad Brock's own iterative design on his carrier. Not only did he change the design, but he was also able to add a mechanical element to pull through the film similar to the negative supply carrier. For some reason, I thought this wouldn't work. I don't know, it just seemed too simple or whatever, but it holds the film flat. It pulls it through easily. It's got a little squeak to it from the uh, little O-rings. It's got a couple screws, so a couple non 3D printed parts, but it's a lot smaller than his first design and it just is cooler with that um, 3D printed knob on there that you can just pull this through. So there were many iterations on Brad Brock's, but I didn't want to print all of those from this video. So I found the ones that I loved. This one is from RW on grabcad.com or digital hardware on Reddit. He took the main design and flipped it on its head completely. Completely 3, 3D printed aside from the two pulling washers inside of it. It all fits together really nicely. It looks really similar to the negative supply one. Uh, it's really cool. I really like the design. He put his little logo in here. He didn't print that well, so I'm gonna work on printing this one a little better. It is pretty awesome. The knob feels really good on it. The film flows pretty smoothly through it, and um, it's pretty cool. That knob is really awesome. The only downside to this one is the potential for scratches by the way he made the opening. Now, if the he made the opening similar to the other ones, this one literally would have been perfect. I would have said, don't worry about anything else. This is the one we made it. Um, but it doesn't have that. Maybe I'll add that on my combined one. I feel like a more bendy film would scratch in this one and that definitely needs to be changed. I need to try printing it again, so maybe it is my fault, but I think the design is really cool and it's like almost there. Next up is another iteration on Brad Rocks and probably the cleanest one yet. This one is by Sam W427 on Thingiverse. It uses nothing but 3D printed parts, but it doesn't have an advancer. And I really like the opening on this one. It's smooth. So inside of it, it does have that space for the film not to touch, but it's rounded to kind of give it a more professional feel. So I really like those curves and it has the option to put a lens cover on it. It's kind of hard to see in this video. There's these four dots in it. It has this option to put a lens cover on it, which would be really cool for that as well. So this is a super cool design and it actually prints really well in 120 as well. So it's the exact same design, just kind of stretched for 120. Taking a moment to talk about 120, 35 works really well on these carriers because it's smaller, but the bigger 120 could easily bow if it's a super bendy film. I was actually really surprised it didn't bow in a few of them, but I think that's because I have some non-bendy film and it's been flattened in a binder for a long time. So that's a pro tip, take your bendy film, put it in some sleeves, flatten it with some books. So there's a couple of them in this video. This is that one that was that I just showed you. Uh, I have this longer extended one to do six by nine. Um, so that's a cool one. And actually it holds pretty flat. I'm actually very surprised how flat. So being that flat and it slides really easy, that's actually pretty good. And like the other ones, it's got the raised section to not touch the film and only touch those edges. I actually really like some of the 120 carriers. Here's one for just six by six. Okay, so last up is actually one that I had to pay for and it's this company called cameracraft.com and has a few iterations. What's cool about them is it's completely 3D printed. Even the sprocket advancer is completely 3D printed with no O-rings, which is a little janky and I'll show you that in a second. The one feature that's really interesting is obviously these take up spools that keeps your film off the table and don't get random scratches on the table. I really like the thought and design behind this one. 
and you can get both 35 and 120 in two different types of them. It's even got this hole for slide film, which I think is really cool as well. It kind of covers all the bases. It also has a spot for attachment for setting up different lens mounts where you can use this without a copy stand, which is really, really cool. I don't have a lens dialed in yet, so I didn't want to print those yet. It's pretty cool that you can use this without um, a copy stand. So it works really well to keep the film flat, but you have to manage taking up this take up spool and advancing it forward. And it's got this sort of plastic grabbing the sprocket holes that works super well, but it sounds like it's just destroying the film and it's very cringy sound. It works really well to holding it flat and I do think it's a really interesting design. Um, I'd have to try it out a lot more to kind of see if I really like it. But to be honest, I've got a dusty space, so maybe those take-up rolls is a good idea. So you can go to cameracraft.com down below and you can buy the design for 30 bucks and then you have to get it printed by someone. Let me know if you want me to be your printer. Um, I can print it for you if you buy it from him. And uh, just let me know if you wanna do that. Hit me up on Instagram. So I think my favorite out of just pure function is the Brad Brock V2 um, with this advancer. I think it worked really well. It holds the film flat. It's very small and compact. And I like that it kept the film from touching anything so it shouldn't touch anything to give it any scratches or anything like that. And that Sam W1 did come in with a cleaner design. I do like this one, but in reality, I think I really like the Advancer on that one. And I think a lot of you guys would like the Advancer on the Brad Brock's one as well. I think all these guys did amazing work on designing their film carriers. And there's so many more out there that I just have enough time to print for this video. But I think these are all really good options and really cool. Like I said before though, I do wanna see like a combination of all these designs and I think I'm gonna be doing that in the future here to give you guys what I think the best one of these is. I can sell my design for really affordable for you guys cause I wanna get all you guys scanning, shooting film, scanning film. I want you guys developing film. I want you guys doing it all. Once I make that, I'm gonna include it in the description. It won't be ready for this video, but I'm gonna be working on that soon. So if it's there, then I did it. Yay. If you want one of these scanners listed or the light table 3D printed base, hit me up on Instagram and I can talk with you on how I can print one for you uh, just for a small print fee and then I can get it out to you and you can try it yourself. But I am gonna give away five of these basic film carriers for my subscribers. So how can you win this? Here we go. All you have to do is be a subscriber and share a picture of this video or something about this video to your story and tag me in it on Instagram. If you do not tag me, I will not see it and I won't know that you entered. That is the only way to enter is to tag me in it and be a subscriber to this video. So again, I'm giving away five of these. The end date for submitting is Friday, July 2nd at noon Pacific time be there. Also, if you're watching this video after the fact and you missed it, again, you can reach out on Instagram and I can print you one. Thank you everyone for watching. If you digged this and my fun film photography adventures, definitely consider subscribing, hit the like button, hit the bell to get notifications about new videos coming out and consider following me on Instagram. And if you want any of these film carriers, just hit me up. I'll help you out. Purchasing one of these will help me out as well. I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.